Hello, and welcome to Grug Gaming. And welcome back to another episode of What's in the Box as we wrap up our release of Guilds of Ravnica. This time we have the Guilds of Ravnica bundle or fat pack, depending on what you wish to call it. Ooh, we're very, very glittery today. Um, so the fat pack here is a kind of a almost get started product. It gives us a lot of cool stuff around the new set to kind of get you into it. So we're going to go ahead and open it up, take a look at what's inside here. Let's check it out. Get out our trusty, whoa, and dangerous opening device. Carefully cut down the side. Oh, maybe. Oh, there we go. That's all we needed. Man, this, this camera and table these past couple videos i don't know what i've done i'm just gonna be adjusting everything just stops moving around i don't know what happened to my setup it's like my mat is super slippery recently and i don't know what's happening there so folks let's go ahead and check this out oh first we'll remove the wrapping as you can see it is a brand new product no hocus pocus here Unlike those other channels who go, oh, look at us, we've opened 10 Mythics in this pack because we seeded it. We're not that way. We are the raw, uncut work. So, we get a Don't Steal Stuff tag. Super important. Whoa, there's all kinds of stuff in here. So, first thing you have is the oversleeve. And if we break the oversleeve open very carefully along this edge, it's got that like sticky gel adhesive. We get, it's kind of hard to show, it's the Ravnica poster. Shows you one of the, I don't know where this is in Ravnica. I don't know Ravnica well enough, but some kind of floating castle in the sky. I don't know who's, would that be Boros's? I mean, I'm seeing the leaves. I imagine it's something to do with Boros or Selesnia. Um, not sure. Ooh, it's got that, that sticky stuff. Can we get it all off in one go? Can we do it? Oh, 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 oh. Come on, 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 come on. Oh, we're good. All right. Beautiful. So that is the included poster. Again, it'd be nice if it didn't have the folds in it. Those could be cool put up on a wall everywhere, but is what it is. We get this little box right here. Again, it's just a little tiny box. If you want to store cards in, it is big enough that, uh, as you can see, whoa, grab a card. As you can see, you can fit a stack or two of sleeved cards in there. Um, you have to lay them flat. It is, of course, too short for you to put the card in that way. Um, so you can lay them flat, but you could put other stuff in here. Uh, it's just a handy little box. And we've seen that in the other other bundle packages before. In fact, I might use that for something else. Oh, but now it's on the floor. Next up, you get the story. Uh, this is really this is the big thing that I think the bundles are great for. I recommend if you if you want to get into the lore. Man, we got a lot of shadows today. We got to readjust the camera that's in here after this video. Um, so what it does is it gives you kind of the background of everything, runs over the different guilds, um, gives you the story background, the main characters like Planeswalkers in the set, uh, then gives you some more information. So here's like House Demir and a couple important characters, and the Izzet League, uh, the Golgari Swarm. Whoa. The Boros Legion, Celesnia Conclave, oh, and then here are what they think are going to be the most important cards, the coolest cards in the set, um, which they've done okay, I think, here, on choosing the different cards for the set here. And then you have the full color, oh, first you have a Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, the D&D tie-in they're doing, um, so that if you really like the Ravnica world, you can set your D&D campaign there. Uh, and then you have the card list. 
So all the cards, of course, you could look these up on Gatherer as well. It also shows you the uh, fact that there are some exclusive cards that are only found in the Planeswalkers deck. Again, we saw some of those when we looked at it. And then we had the Buy a Box promo card, which was the Impervious Great Worm. I want to see him in a deck. I want to see that happen. And then Magic the Gathering Arena. Now, I'm going to... I don't know in the bundle. I haven't checked, so I'm going to have to see. When we opened the Planeswalkers deck, a fun surprise that we found uh, that I didn't know about was the fact that they included an online code that allowed you to get that deck inside of Magic the Arena. Kind of like Pokemon has done for a long time with all their theme decks, where you buy the deck and bam, you get a copy of it in the online game as well, a two for one. It'll be interesting to see uh, what they do with that. I would love to see them use the paper game to push Arena. Um, you know, if you're going, if they're going to do this online push, but they want to keep that, you know, social in in-person experience that really is what makes Magic fun to play. The fact that you're getting together with a bunch of people to have this shared gaming experience, not just that you're playing a game, um, which is why real life Magic is better than online Magic. I hope that they do something more to drive people into buying the physical cards. So, we're going to go ahead and open up the top of the box. Inside, you get one spin down. Uh, it is going to be one that is based on the guild. I know it's going to be a little out of focus, but until we get to the cards, of course, because that's what we'll focus in on. But what we have here... Oh, come on, focus today, camera. Uh, what we have here, we have one of the spin-down dice. This is the Demir guild, so it's the blue. Oh, my goodness. Come on, buddy. Oh, you're better than this, camera. This is the Demir uh, die. So it's got the Demir symbol on it. It's blue and white. Uh, with a black numbering. Uh, I, people are collecting the sets. Uh, you know, if you got the pre-release pack, you got the set. Uh, I don't... Uh, nope, there was no spin down with the Planeswalkers decks. I don't believe we didn't see one there. So it'll be interesting to see. I don't believe there's a deck builders kit coming out for this set, so you won't be able to get one there. But we'll add that to the spin downs. We get... 10 Return to Ravnica Boosters, which we'll be opening. You also get, oh, these are so great. Um, you know, these were in the Planeswalkers deck. I I like the idea that they've given this. You'll see this in a lot of their uh, pre-con stuff, too. They have, like, the fold-outs. But these, you know, here's the basics of deck building. Um, and so, basically, the basics of deck building how to make your deck. You've got these formats that people play, so standard booster draft formats and then commander on there. And then you have the on your turn, uh, the, the phases of a turn on a little card. I mean, these are great. This is super great. Just a little reminder, especially if you're new. And then wizards.com, learn to play magic. Wow, we're having all kinds of trouble with the camera focus today. I'm sorry, we'll get that fixed. We will fix it as we go along here, folks. Next up, and I thought this was really cool when I saw this, because somebody else they saw open up one of these packs, and this was the neat thing. So you have your land pack, which you get inside of the bundle boxes. Uh, and the nice thing about the land pack is if you, it gives you the basic lands. It gives you a hundred, is it a hundred total? I'm not sure here. I think it might be a hundred total, um, but it should be... Yeah, I think you give you, oh, maybe not a one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, forty, fifteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, maybe it's not a hundred. That's embarrassing. What did I do with the box? Uh, sorry, 75 land cards. So 15 of each land card, one of each art. But it also, they put in a foil land card of each type. So you get a foil forest. You get a foil mountain. A foil swamp. A foil island. And a foil plains. And then you get the other artwork for all the lands. Um, which... 
I think getting those foils is cool. It gives you a reason if you want, I mean, to buy the fat packs. Who knows how much these foils will go for uh, before they curl up. But that's kind of neat. And it's it's weird, though, because they are just the foil regular lands. It's not like they're the Mark Pool lands uh, that had the rare symbol on them. They just have the the normal normal uh, lands, but they are foily. So that's cool. If you want some foil lands, you can pick this up. Find people have picked it up. They'll trade away the lands, probably. If they're like me and they uh, don't like foil cards, as opposed to uh, our mat of foils is the only thing that I like uh, in foil. I do not like foil cards actually in decks uh, because I don't like what they do. So here we are. These should be 10 regular boosters. Uh, nothing spectacular about them as far as that goes. Uh, so we should see a pretty good mix. Let's find out what we hit in this pack. Um, because we might have winners, we might have duds, who knows. Um, I'm actually working on a different deck. I put my Golgari deck together and it turned out to be okay. Like it was fun to play, it plays fine against mid-range decks. Uh, but against some of the fast, heavy hitters, it just didn't stand a chance. So I'm working on another deck that uh, I'm one of my favorite type of decks. You probably know it. It uses the word death touch. Uh, so we'll see if we pick up any of the cards I'm looking for in that deck here. So we got Leapfrog. Uh, we'll do this like we normally do. We will bust through these commons at a pretty fairly quick rate. Uh, if you've watched my other unboxing videos, you have probably seen all of these commons by this point. And here we are into on commons. We got a lava coil. Yes, look at that. First pack, got a card I needed. Another Night Veil vale Predator. Need that for the deck I want to put together. That's beautiful. An inescapable blaze. And a find and finality. They really want me to play Golgari. Really do. Um, the nice thing about this, when you we a lot of the cards we've seen that return uh, two creature cards to your hand, the rate has usually been either three mana, um, or you'll see cards that are you know for two mana like uh, Macabre Waltz, where you can pull two creatures out of the graveyard, but then you have to discard a card. Hey, the foil rare! You've got to be joking me! And yet again, the the erratic Cyclops is the foil rare. This keeps happening to me. Oh, the Erratic Cyclops. They just love putting them there. But anyways, being able to pull two creatures out for two mana straight up out of your graveyard to your hand, I think is a really great rate. Um, of course, we've seen cards before that'll pull it into your hand for one mana for one creature, but you don't have the option of grabbing two. Uh, there are, of course, some great cards like Animate Dead. Um, you know, two mana, put it on the field, but with a modifier. I wish we'd have Animate Dead reprinted. That would be great. All right. Here we go. Pack number two. Got a whole bunch of damn dare commons. Doing damn dare common things. Ooh, that centaur. This guy, I like this guy. I mean, he's a trap. I think as far as standard goes. Um, double strike is awesome on a 3-3 body. For five mana, a little expensive. Have put him out of the gates. Eh, he's not perfect, but he's he's he's. I want to make a deck that uses him, but he just he seems like a trap to me. He's a trap I will fall into. Hey, look, there's a gate to go with him. Pop that in our gate section. All right, on commons, invert and invent, selective snare, status and statue. Again, I just I like this card. Even though it's, again, costs more than murder, but lots of options. And a blood operative. Again, Vampire Assassin with lifelink. 3-1 for 3 lifelinker. Not bad. Um, when he enters the battlefield, exile target card from someone's graveyard. And then, of course, anytime you surveil, you can pay 3 life and bring him back to your hand. So a little bit of recursion, which is always good. Neat Demir card. Too bad he doesn't have Death Touch. Then he'd be a great card. All right, here we go. Next pack, next set of commons, the Barging Garbage Sergeant. All righty. Veiled Shade, of course, Artful Takedowns. 
Gotta love them. Doing some devious covering up. Lurching some rhizomes and legionnaire and some sky knights. All right. Beam Splinter Mage. We got Disinformation Campaign. We've got Gerd for battle. And then finally, we have the Gruesome Menagerie, which if you spend five mana. This is a really good rate card. This is again one of those talking about great cards. Five mana. Take a one cost mana creature, then a two cost mana creature card, then a three cost mana creature card, put them on the battlefield for five. Um, if you have been playing on curve and that stuff is all in your graveyard, great card. I might work this into the death touch decks as much as I should play on curve. So that will be great. Next up, Boros Gate, Elf Knight. Sorry, I got distracted. I was just thinking about putting that in the deck and I've got a couple I might have a play set of those at this point so that might happen uh, what we're really looking for here of course are Shocklands and the oh I can't remember the name of the card I've said it wrong every single time I'm going to say it the Doom Whisperer the Whisperer of Doom the Secret Whisperer Doom Dude, the 5 mana demon Rare is what uh, mythic is what we're really looking for. He's the dream card that we would love to get one more of. Alrighty, the Demir Locket, of course. See this? This could be so great if you didn't have to surveil to activate him. Oh, it makes me sad. Makes me a sad man. All right, Whispering Snitch, the affectionate Indrik. Sprouting a Renewal, and finally, ooh, a Dream Eater. Not a bad Mythic. I mean, it's a Mythic. That's number one. Um, it's not a bad Mythic at all. Uh, you get to do a lot of surveilling. You know, you get to surveil, pop something from the board back to their hand. It's got flying, it's got flash, you can play whatever you want. It's a good top-end card. Good top-end card. Um, I really like it. We'll put it up here. We have a Mythic. We'll put it in the a Mythics spot up here, out of focus, ready for us to look at later. Oh, why Why even put that little tear section there if it's not going to do anything? Why do that? All righty, here we go. Let's keep barreling on through like a train bound for Georgia. We won't continue the rest of the song as we don't want to get sued for song lyrics. But, hey, Whisper Agent, like that card. 3-2 Flash for 3, good card. Could be a better card if, anyone in the audience, if it had Death Touch. All right. Conclave Tribunal, cast out with Convoke, good card. Golgari Raiders, good thing I did a bunch of... Uh, Work to get some of these earlier. I already have my play set, but it's okay. Now, the only problem is, of course, if you don't have Undergrowth, he's a dead card in your hand if things have gone horribly wrong. Um, or And number two, he's weaker than the Rhizome. And I don't know that Haste is worth it. Pilfering Imp, and boom! Onward Ego, the card everybody wants in Demir. The removal card that pulls everything out of there. It's the new, uh, oh, what was the card from Kaladesh? Or Aether Revolt, I can't remember which, that did the same thing in black. Can't remember, but it's great. Get rid of Teferi. Make him not happen. Oh, you're playing Turbo Fog? Well, now you're playing Turbo Teferi never comes out and you don't win. How's that for an answer? Huh? You can play four of those. You can remove every Fog card from the game if you want to. All right, call her the culprit. Starts us off in this pack. Got a Demir card in there. Oh, we got a Child of the Night reprinted a thousand times. Still a great card. 2 1 Life Linker. Nothing wrong with that at all. Alrighty. Might of the Masses. Pump up them creatures. Grappling Sundew. Never let it die. Wee Dragonauts. I think like you should say that with a uh, Scottish accent. Or an Irish one. I lolly got some weed dragonuts and a venerated Loxodon. Convoke and bonus up your convokers. 
Pretty good. Pretty good. That Selesnya Convoke deck can be awesome. Or putting that in with a Boros deck and pumping up your guys so that you can mentor more stuff. All right. Next pack. We are on pack number seven out of 10. In this box, we have been able to pull at least one card that we were looking for and another that we might use. So we have a Goblin Crater Maker, a Mulder Hulk, the Street Riot, and last but not least, ooh, Tajik, the Legion's Edge. Great card, I mean three mana for a 3-2 Haster. Good, Mentor, better. All your stuff can't be killed by damage spells. Even better. And then give him first strike for two mana. Oh yeah, he's a great card. Boros has some great stuff. I might have to put the Boros deck together because I've got so many um, cards that just run that pure mana curve into a win. Just rush their face. Always fun. But not overpowered. Not like the red deck was where it's just no fun to play against. It feels like it's fast but fair. Um... At least that's my opinion so far of uh, the Boros decks. Again, everyone loves mid-range magic. No one wants the game to be no fun. House Guild Mage for Demir. A Night Veil vale Sprite. A Golgari Find Broker. And... <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo! I'm so excited. So, Doom Whisperer, by the way, is the proper name of the card I was looking for. Um, wow. Okay, I'm excited. So, Doom Whisperer is the mythic I was looking for. I love this card. Five mana for a 6-6 six, six Trample Flyer. That's just great. Pay two life to Surveil 2. So, you've got Fixing. He goes in the Surveil deck. He's a good top end to any black deck at all. His rate is just great, um, and if you need to do some fixing to find that one card you need to win, he can really do it for you late in the game. So, just gotta watch your life totals. But, oh yeah, that is, that is some top stuff there. Whew! That just paid for the entire Fat Pack uh, bundle, pulling him. Well, it didn't really. I mean, he, but he is a, I want to say he's going for like $14, $15 right now. So if I had had to buy my third copy of him uh, for the deck I'm doing, that would have been really expensive. But I'm glad we got him. Wojek Bodyguard. I'm going to have a talk if I haven't done this yet. This has been the biggest trap I've fallen into so far. So this looks great. Three mana for a 3-3 three, three with Mentor. And he can't attack or block alone is awful. Late game, sure. You want to put down two guys, he's part of that combo good. If you're playing on curve and the other opponent though is removing stuff, you're not going to have a creature for him to mentor uh, because once they cap him down to him, you're just out of luck. He just sits there and stares at you. So sad. He has been the biggest disappointment. Um, I know I've probably said different in a previous video, but as of now, he's a big disappointment. <laughs> now that I have played more games where he has been involved in my deck. All right, we got a lead guild mage. We got a world soul colossus. We got an inspiring unicorn and uh, light of the legion. Six mana for a five five with flying. I like it. Uh, mentor. I like it even more. When it dies, put a plus one plus one counter on each white creature you control. I like it a lot. That's a nice card. That is a good creature. And again, it's in that 5-6 mana range, that, that top end reachable range when you're talking constructed. All right, here we are, last pack. I'm already excited. We're already a winner because of the Doom Whisperer uh, that we pulled. That was great. A uh, big shout out to my local game store. Cam, you're the greatest. And uh, I always let the guy at my local game store just hand me the packs uh, or booster box, whatever I buy. Because so far... 
he has the luckiest hands I've ever encountered uh, as far as getting me the things I need. All right, so here we go. We have our Glaive of the Guild Pack, another status and statue, a gird for battle, and finally, finally, for all those out there who've waited to the end of the video, those who may be listening to the dulcet tones, D&B, you know who you are. For your excitement, we have a citywide bust. Wah, wah. Now, it's not a real wah, wah. It's not, not that bad a card. It is a board wipe, uh, but it's only for big things. You're playing the weenie deck. It's good. Oh, we finished with a foil. Look at that. We got a foil common wild Ceratok. Oh, look at him with his lots of horns and his being all horny. Yeah, we're going to finish on a horny card. All righty. Well, folks, that is the bundle, the fat pack. It's got many different names people call it. Um, what I like to call it is a package full of the mythics, one of which being the mythic that we needed. Oh, I'm excited. Well, folks, that was fun. I want to say... Thanks for watching. Um, before I say it, actually, I should say, as usual, buy your cards at your local game store whenever you can. But on top of that, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Please tell your friends. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, we hope to see you soon.